Wus, wus, wus. Yeah. This is the WUS, Indonesia's high-speed railway that connects the cities of Jakarta and Bandung. The name WUS stands for Waktu Hemat Operasi Optimal dan Sistem Handal, literally saving time, optimal operations, and good system. This name was chosen to the dismay of those rooting for Bandung Jakarta Intercity Rail. <laughs> So, the thing is fast, with a service speed of 350 km per hour. Basically the same as service in the Beijing-Shanghai high-speed railway. This line uses 8-car KTIC400AF trains, which are just the export variants of the CR400AF. Each train set can carry 600 people and runs on standard gauge track and 25kV AC overhead wires. The only rail line in Indonesia with such a setup. The line is 142.8 km long and has 4 stations. Three of them are operational and one of them is under construction as of making this video. There are 24 departures a day or one train every 25 to 62 minutes. The first departure from Harlem is at 6.40 am and the last departure is at 8.30 pm. From Tegaluar, it's 5.50 am and 8.30 pm respectively. Starting with Harlem, it is directly connected to the LRT Bekasi line and Transjakarta line 7W. The 7W provides a one-seat ride to Chawang Central BRT shelter the meeting point of 8 different BRT lines as well as a bunch of non-BRT and regional bus lines. There's also a bus to Halim and Sukarno-Hatta airports. Halim station does kind of feel like a mall which is a good thing, plenty of food options in the bottom floor. The bridge connecting it with Halim LRT station also has a lot of food options, though maybe there's room for improvement there since that sky bridge is a bit warm inside. There's parking space, though the roads surrounding the station are somewhat congested. Next is Karawang the station that is currently under construction. It will most likely open in 2025. Here's a suggestion. Run shuttle buses between this station and Aeon Mall Delta Mass and give the option for people from Harlem to get off at Karawang. I say this because in Bandung, you can't go from Padalarang to Tegaluar. Next is Padalarang. Most people get off here. Your transit options include the Wush feeder train to Bandung station. The feeder train schedule does seem to match the Wush schedule and upon arriving in Padalarang, you have around 15 minutes to transfer to the feeder train. The feeder train also stops in Cimahi and Bandung. Now back in Padalarang, here you can also transfer to Transmetro Pasundan Line 2 that connects Kota Baru Parahyangan to Alnaton Bandung. Based on my observations, buses arrive every 10 minutes, but really, I do not recommend using the bus unless you absolutely have to because the roads surrounding Padalarang station are in a state of perpetual congestion. Now, comparing Padalarang with Halim, Let's just say that Padalarang's food and drink options are a bit less diverse. Seriously, this station makes Halim look like MKG's food court. Next is Tegaluar, the antithesis of Padalarang in some way. Padalarang is surrounded by houses. Tegaluar is surrounded by nothing, according to Google Maps. I have not been there yet because whose tickets are expensive. There are buses to Sumarikon Bandung and well, Bandung. But that's about it in terms of transit. Now, you could count Sumarikon Bandung as TOD, but this developer is incredibly car-centric. There's also plans to extend this line to Surabaya, Indonesia's second largest city. Currently, there are two proposed routes, one via Semarang and one via Yogyakarta. Currently, the one via Yogyakarta seems more likely as to which will be expanded in stages. The Bandung-Surabaya section will not be built in one go and the first stage is to extend it to Yogyakarta. Personally, I do prefer the via Yogyakarta option as there are more tourist destinations there. Remember that tourists make up a large chunk of Wush passengers. Even though this is high-speed rail, I can't help but notice the similarities between this and flying. First of all, your ears will feel a mild discomfort due to the air pressure changes. This may be due to the fact that the track elevation ranges from 25 to 834 meters above sea level. Your ears might notice something if you climb 800 meters in less than half an hour. Legroom is also very good actually, better than any economy class seat on any airline. Boarding is a bit similar to flying though, you do need to go through security and they won't let you in the platforms until the train is near or ready, but unlike flying, you can buy tickets in the station. Speaking of which, premium economy class tickets cost 250,000 rupiah, which is more expensive than most bus and train services between the two cities, though I have found tickets that cost 200,000 rupiah if you book online. 
Now, normally this is where I would just roll the outro and end the video, but there is an entire metropolitan region that needs to be called out for multiple grave sins in urban and transportation planning. Bandung has 2.5 million people in the city proper and 9 million in the metro area. And apart from a single corridor of unelectrified commuter rail service with questionable headway, there is no rapid transit. Why did we let a city balloon to the side of Chicago without a single MRT or even BRT line? And no, Transmetro Pasundan is not a BRT system. It's just a regular orbit frequent bus network, which would be fine for a city under 500,000 people. Transmetro Pasundan has like five lines only, so that's also concerning. This is a problem for the Wush because once you're in Bandung, how do you get around? This is why a lot of people, including my family, just ended up driving to Bandung. Bandung needs multiple, maybe five metro lines, especially to Lembang, if such a thing is even possible. A lot of people who go to Bandung for vacation go to Lembang, and since there's no quick way from the Wush to Lembang, people drive and you end up with apocalyptic congestion there. Even if a metro from Lembang is impossible to build due to the terrain and the fact that there's an active fault line there, consider an O-Bahn style BRT or multiple gondolas. This is what I think is also the main reason why the Wuxi's ridership has not reached the targeted ridership of 29,000 passengers a day. Currently, the numbers range from 18 to 24,000. Getting better public transport to Lembang and other tourist destinations is also important considering that 44% of passengers surveyed said that they were using the Wush to go on vacation. And let's be honest, most people's idea of a vacation to Bandung looks a whole lot more like this. Then going to the mall. We have too much of that in Jakarta. And for someone going on a business trip, if the only choice is a 40 minute bus ride while stuck in traffic, or a 30 minute drive, also stuck in traffic, I think most people will prefer the latter. Also fun fact, but in 2018, the Beijing Tianjin High Speed Railway has a ridership of 82,000 passengers a day. So that might be due to the fact that Tianjin has 6 times the population of Bandung. So in that respect, I think the Wush is doing fine. So my verdict, in the Jakarta Airlines tier list, the Wush deserves S tier.